Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to wire up some electric fans and I hope that this is going to work out right and it'll be an easy dual fan, dual relay, dual temperature, all nice easy setup that anybody could do on anything. So what I've got is two parts store fans and I made the shroud. Um, I'd only had one wired it previously and as long as you're moving my truck, the Dakota RT, it didn't need it, it, it didn't even need this on as long as you were rolling, even slow. But if you're sitting in traffic, one fan kept it cool. So we're going to wire up two this time. I'm actually going to take the time to do it right. So I, I made the shroud, and these fans were just those cheap zip tied on through the radiator things. I'm not a fan of those, so I made the shroud. Just some, it's a little thin, 16 gauge aluminum. I went and got a Harbor Freight brake so I can bend everything. And this is door trim from like a Napa hide utility truck body and this here bumper trims what we call it at work so it the shroud just hangs in here right in that groove and then bolts to this I still got to make attachments for that but that's beside the point so we've got two parts to our fans I've got two relays I forgot I've got one fuse link I need to get another one well, it's just a fuse holder what I the key to this thing is hoping that this is going to work the way I think it should work. This is out of a BMW. This is a dual fan switch. It's supposed to be the first one is at 80 degrees Celsius and the second one at 88. So one sensor, three pins, you got a ground in at 80, you got a ground signal here. At 88, you got a ground signal here. So my plan is to ground one relay with the 80 and one with the 88. So then one fan will kick on at 80 degrees Celsius and one will come on at 88. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but I'll look that up later. So I got some basic heat shrink and loom. I got some connectors for where I'm going to connect it in the fuse box, but I like soldering everything. So this would just be for the battery connection for the hots. Well, let's get into it. All right, here's some basic information on relays. You can you can wire these different, but usually this pin, this way, this is pin 30. This is usually your power in. The center pin is your normally closed. So this pin is usually already going through to this pin, as long as nothing is triggering the relay. Now these triggers, which is 85, 86, this is 30, this is 87A, and this is 87. The triggers are most of the time not polarity sensitive. This one can be hot and that one be ground. This one can be hot and that one be ground. I haven't seen one that cares yet. All right, now this is the normally open pin. So as soon as you activate the triggers, this pin now goes to this pin. So you can put power in here and power will come out here when it's triggered. If you put ground in, ground will be out when it's triggered. You can use these things a lot of ways. You can also wire these things backwards. You can use 30 as the output and you can have two different inputs. So it would be inputting from here and then you trigger it and then it will use this wire. So that's just some basic information on that. Now I'm going to look up the sensor and tell you which pin does what on the sensor or the temp switch. This is where I got everything, or at least for the BMW switch FCP Euro. This is what it looks like. You can't really see the pins in this picture, so we're just going to go to the connector. Now on their site, once you find this number, at the bottom, they've got the connector and the washer. Now this is straight thread, so you've got to use that crush washer. So on here, there's three pins. Let's see if I can... There we go. I'll get the reflection out of the way. There's three pins. These two... Are your output pins this is your input pin so if you put a ground here whenever it hits 80 degrees Celsius one of these pins connects and then at 88 both pins connect to kick both your relays to kick both your fans on now I put ground in here and ground came out I'm, I'm pretty sure you can put I could have put ignition hot in and then ignition hot would have come out and then you could have just grounded the other side of the trigger and maybe been a little easier if you want to do that but I'd, I'd rather use ground signals for switches or temp switches like this, not hot. So that's the basic information. 
if you get that switch, this connector, that washer, and you somehow get it in your cooling system, then wire it to two relays and you've got dual fan control. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of work and have this thing just in uh, time lapse and then once I get to a certain point I'll go over what I did so that someone else with a Dakota can copy this directly and give you definitions of what I'm hooking into where and why so if you're, if you're not working on a Dakota you could still do the same thing. It may change by your model, but most of these relays are ignition triggered. And let's see, on my Dakota, these light green and black, those are ignition hots. Those are hot when the key is on. The reason you want to do that is because the, the temp sensor or temp switch is going to be a ground signal. So it doesn't care key on or key, or key off, it doesn't matter. If it's that temperature, it's going to send a ground signal. And if that's bad, if, if the other side of the trigger is battery hot, you shut the key off, your fans are just going to keep going until the temperature drops low enough. And I keep looking over here for the temp switch because it's going to be right here, hiding behind all this. If you didn't want to do that, they make a piece you can put, you cut the hose and put it in between, put the sensor or the switch in there, you could do that. Um, you could do a lot of different things, but that's what I'm going to do. It'll tuck in there. I don't like those hose things, but you could do it. So I've got my ignition trigger. Now I'm going to mount my, well, I'm not going to mount them yet because the pigtails aren't that long. My relays are going to sit right back here. So I'm going to tie all this stuff back up, put the fuse box back in where it belongs because we're done with that. Good stopping point. I've got my ignition hot trigger and I've got my ground triggers. Now for that sensor always try to keep everything in mind while you're wiring. It's going to need a ground for itself so that it can send a ground out. So I've got my black wires my ground. I got red and white and red and black. These are going to be the signal wires. So I've got this coming up and this is going to go to the chassis somewhere for its ground. Now the output wires here that are going to go to the fans, I don't care which one is which, that's why they're both green. It doesn't matter. As long as one fan comes on, then the other fan comes on. It'll be just fine. So where I'm going to run this ground, I'm also going to run those grounds. So I'm going to tie in some more blacks coming up, and I'll leave them pigtailed out here. So we'll have three pigtails. One going to the sensor, or the temp switch, one going to the fans, one going to the grounds to the ground and then we're almost done I almost forgot about the hots so the red wires the pin 30 on the relay these two are gonna follow this one and they're gonna go up to here they're gonna drop off on the way by while this is over to the temp switch they'll drop off and pick it up right here with some some uh, fuse holders in between 
if there was more open stuff like there's one open right here I could go get the pen from the junkyard and put another fuse right here but I'd rather them both have their own fuses and I don't have enough room for two so we'll just have two little fuse holders over here and connect it and we'll be just fine <laughs> tips about going on my little soldering gun I used to have a much bigger one in my opinion the bigger the tip the more heat it holds when you start getting in the wires that are thicker it draws the heat out of the tip so quick that, and then it, the problem is is that you have to sit there so long the solder starts kind of wicking up the wire it should be set it down solder really quickly and you're done it doesn't have doesn't give it a lot of time for that heat to, to walk everywhere and that's why soldering is frowned upon sometimes because in spots, if, if, if it's in between the engine, I wouldn't want a solder joint there. It's gonna shake and eventually that brittle spot's gonna break. And if you really don't know what you're doing and you cook the hell out of it and it's got solder wicked all the way up to here, so now there's this much wire that's brittle as hell, then of course you're gonna have a problem. So, just looking at it, what I said earlier about putting the hots on the reds, the red is not the end, it's in the middle. That's not our guy, so. Paying attention, 30's down here. So we're ready to go. We've got our ground, our signals, our power in, our hot wires, our grounds, and the wires going to our fans. We're all ready, so I'm gonna start taping up and if I have enough loom here. If not, then this will continue on to tomorrow. All right, wiring's all done. I've just got my relays zip tied to the hood release right now. I was gonna rivet them right up here, but my Jeep Harbor Freight rivet gun took a crap, so I'll probably, probably not gonna do that. Fix that later. Anyway, sensor's in. It's hiding in there. Sensor's in on the, uh, on this 99. It only has one, one sensor. The older ones had a, a sensor for the computer and a sensor for the gauge. So even though it didn't have the second gauge or the second sensor for the gauge, it had the, the platform. The, there was a round spot where it would have been drilled and tapped. So I just drilled and tapped it for a pipe pipe thread. And that is uh, the sensor for BMW is M14 by 1.5. So I, I got an adapter and I drilled it and tapped the inside for M14 by 1.5. Cheap drill and tap set off Amazon. Worked fine. I've got a Deutsch connector here, 4-pin, so that I can just unplug this and pull this out. Obviously we've got our ignition interlock here, and i got another fuse holder, two 20-amp fuses. I've already got the truck warmed up and tested, and it works just fine. The, uh, the first one comes on at about 175, the second one comes on at about 190. First one should already be on. I don't think it's cooled off enough. It's still on. Uh, we're not going to sit through it warming up. Just trust me, it works. So. I didn't go over how a relay works. I don't think it's that important. Um, I think what's nice is people who are looking for this kind of thing or looking for an easier answer than two temp switches and trying to figure out where to put those. You can run one temp switch, two relays, two fans at different temperatures. It's just very simple, very easy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you the part number for that switch 
and I'll point out which wire does what on it and the part number for the connector and relays are self-explanatory I'll do a brief of what pin does what on a relay if, if you just don't know but other than that it works it's done I've still got to make my little mounting tabs for my uh, I still got to make the mounting tabs to bolt this in so it can't bounce out and go anywhere and then eat everything on the front of the engine or everything on the front of the engine eat the fans big old mess so I'll go over that stuff um, I kind of just wanted to get this thing done like anything else if you have any questions let me know I'll try to answer it I, I think if you have a Dakota this is easy enough or any RAM really any car as long as you can get a temp sensor a temp switch in there then you can run a dual fan very easy you don't need some fancy control box or anything weird if you're a guy that likes those radiator probes don't don't do that that's, that's crap just do it right um that's all i got for you hopefully this helps some people i did a lot of digging to find this and figure out which which part number was what and what i needed to get and I just guessed on the wiring and it worked. So anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.